Though I was fishing with my nephew earlier today, when this very sad and ugly nasty woman walks up, and I'm looking at her closely, cause I see she's got a loaf of bread in her hand, and my thought is, oh this dumb fat cunt's gonna come over here throwing bread, bringing ducks around and scare all my fish. But as I look closer I realize, she's not feeding bread to the ducks, she's just walking around eating a loaf of banana bread. And my little nephew who's about 6 years old looks up at me and asks who that lady is. And what you need to understand is that I love my nephew, he's my little buddy, but he is not above getting messed with. So without even thinking, I blurt out, oh, that's your new mother. And my nephew goes, you're just messing with me, you can't trick me. But as it turns out, yes, I could trick him very easily. And I said, look, you can tell that I'm telling the truth, because you see that mole on her neck, that big mole with the hair sticking out of it? And he goes, yeah. When she comes over here, She's gonna pick you up, and she wants you to kiss her on the mole. Go holy stromboli, let me kiss my new mama's moly, and give her a smooch. And he's going, no, that's not my mom, you can't trick me, it's not funny. And of course, this punisher of sofas comes up, because she's just a nice old lady that wants to say hello. And she opens her mouth to speak, and my sweet, lovable little nephew goes, you're not my mommy, and he shoves her. And she's on the ground screaming. And the whole time I'm thinking, this is reminding me of something. What is it that, that this is reminding me of? And it dawned on me that I had been in almost the exact same situation 10 years ago. I couldn't afford to go to college, so I signed up for the military. And my home base, Keesler Air Force Base, was hosting a regional showdown of the Special Olympics. And when I found out this was going to ruin my plans for the weekend, I wasn't so upset because I thought, oh, we're just gonna have some retarded kids playing field hockey with their gigantic swollen tongue. That'll be fun. The short buses start pulling up and out come big, fat, adult retards. These were the kinds of retards that you look at the stains on their clothing and you can't tell if it's cum or if it's shit. You could literally not tell whether they were coming or going. And just by my luck, my captain pairs me up with my roommate who's a fucking asshole and he pairs us up with the biggest black man I have ever seen in my life. From a distance, he resembled a solar eclipse. And I go, hi, my name is Smedgma King. And my roommate goes, hi, my name is Douchebag Roommate. And this guy puts his finger right on my nipple, cause he's trying to point at me, but he doesn't understand personal space. And he goes, you, Gene. And I go, no, no, I'm not Gene, I'm Smedgma King. And he goes, you, you Gene. And I go, no, you retarded motherfucker, I'm Smedgma King. And then I realize, oh, I'm the retarded one. Your name is Eugene. And he gave me the most beautiful, wonderful smile that if I'm ever like in bed dying of cancer or something, and I'm trying to remember something good in life because I'm dealing with a lot of pain, I'm going to think back to that beautiful, retarded smile. And we take him out to the torch running ceremony and there's this guy with Down syndrome running with the torch. And I had never seen a man look so terrified in my life. He's running, looking right at the fire, as if if he stops, he's gonna burst into flames. And then we take Eugene to the speed walking marathon, where the people who were only kind of retarded were walking as fast as they could without bending at the knee, and all the really seriously retarded people were just sprinting because they're a bunch of cheating retarded assholes. And later in the day comes the big event, my man Eugene, Three on three beach volleyball. The other team consists of a Down syndrome woman who looks like Janet Reno, and for all I know might have actually been Janet Reno. A little Hispanic guy that looked like a retarded version of Frank from American Pickers. And this one guy who could not stop masturbating. There's balls flying around, there's people setting up shots. He just has his hand in his pants the whole time. He's just doing his own thing. But my man Eugene's team wasn't that much better. Now one of his teammates, I couldn't tell if it was a 90 year old man or a kid with progeria. And the other person on his team was this guy who was only somewhat retarded, though he was doing pretty good. But Eugene fucking sucked at retarded volleyball. Whoever runs the retarded volleyball league must be rigging it so he can make some money cause Eugene goes to hit the ball, he falls over. The wind blows and Eugene falls over. And he's a great big man, and he's falling on Benjamin Button and breaking his bones. And I'm sitting in the bleachers with my roommate, and next to us is a super hot retarded woman. And she's explaining to us 
that her boyfriend, who is on Eugene's team, is only partially retarded because the two of them were out scuba diving one day, their air hoses got tangled in some coral, and by the time that people found them and helped them, they had become slightly retarded. And I know I can't just skip past the fact that I said she was a smoking hot retard, but seriously, she had super nice tits, she had a big round ass, her speech was only slightly slurred, however her fingernails will chew down to nubs, I have seen cooked fish with more intelligent looking eyeballs, and the bitch smelled like onion. I don't know, maybe if I was Shrek, I would have gotten a boner, but I've always been told I sound more like Donkey. And as we're talking to her, my roommate and I both noticed that if you say you scratch your face, she'll scratch her face. If we were to check our phone, she would check her phone. And my roommate, being the disgusting Jew motherfucker he is, he starts testing it out. So he taps himself on the chin, and she taps herself on the chin, and he scratches the back of his ear, and she scratches the back of her ear. And my roommate pulls up his shirt, exposing his fat gut and titties. And she begins to lift up her shirt, but I grab that shirt and I put it down. And she points at my roommate with her retarded finger and goes, Hey, only mommy helps me undress. You're not my mommy. And her boyfriend's ears prick up and he runs over. And now suddenly my 30 year old fat fuck roommate is in a fight with a guy who used to be a rock climber and a scuba diver. You know, he's retarded, but he used to be in really good shape. And he's just beating the ever-loving shit out of my roommate. And I, I probably should have broken it up. But why would I do that? This Jew motherfucker, he would buy ham and cheese Hot Pockets. And if I wanted one, he'd be like, no, you gotta give me two dollars. And I'm like, you motherfucker, the cost of the ham and cheese Hot Pockets is five dollars and forty-five cents for a pack of five. That roughly breaks down to a dollar and nine cents per hot pocket before taxes. You Jew motherfucker, you killed baby Jesus. I let that one slide. You will not overcharge me for hot pockets. And then the next morning, I catch that cheap motherfucker drinking a big tall glass of my orange juice, acting like that's some kind of community chest. Take a penny, leave a penny, bullshit. And you know what? As sweet as orange juice tastes. Watching him getting beat up by a retard tasted even sweeter. Now perhaps our friendship was not as strong as it should have been or as it could have been, but apparently in the brief time that we had known Eugene, he had formed a bond with us because he comes running over and he grabs Scuba Thieves by the shoulders and he throws them into the Six Flags man. And a bunch of high ranking military guys come running over and grab my roommate and they're screaming at him, what the hell is wrong with you son? And at that moment, like I did earlier today, I said the magical phrase that saved a whole lot of trouble. I looked right into the face of the person who was angry at me and I said, he can't help it, the boy's retarded. And as my roommate did, as my nephew did, they pretended to be retarded just long enough to get the fuck on out of there and live another day. So I don't really know what the moral or the point of this story is. Maybe it's that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Like how that old lady was just nice and trying to say hello. Like how pants shitting Eugene turned out to be a very good friend. Or that maybe, just possibly, I was wrong and I should have just let them big old fat retarded titties come off flopping out. I mean, I, I don't think titties get retarded. I mean, what, is one nipple gonna be looking straight ahead and one's gonna be looking up sideways? You know, maybe they'd be slathered with peanut butter or something, I don't know. So until next time, thanks for your time, and goodbye.